Welcome to the Dale Lally Show here on the DK Pittsburgh Sports Podcast Network. I am your host, Dale Lally, and uh, happy Monday. Uh, tomorrow is cut down day for the Steelers and the rest of the NFL. Uh, but before they get to that, the Steelers had to play their final preseason game uh, Sunday night against the Detroit Lions or Sunday afternoon. And they won that 19-9. to um, And if there was any question about who their starting quarterback was, going into the season while that was pretty much uh, dispelled uh, when Mike Tomlin played Mitch Trubisky the entire first half in that game. He went 15 and 19 for 160 yards and a touchdown. And uh, honestly, um, you know, if you look at what the Steeler quarterbacks did in this preseason, uh, it was really a very successful preseason for the Steelers as they transitioned from the Ben Roethlisberger era until the, into the, uh, well, the, the era beyond Ben Roethlisberger. We'll see what that turns up here. Uh, but Mitch Trubisky uh, is going to be the Steelers' starting quarterback. Mike Tomlin hasn't officially announced that yet, but that's what's going to happen. Uh, Kenny Pickett will be number two. And, well, Mason Rudolph could wind up being traded. We'll see. Again, I've, I've said before I wouldn't be interested in just giving him away. Um, you know, I got to I gotta get at least a fifth-round pick for Mason Rudolph. And, uh, you know, with, with the Jimmy Garoppolo news from uh, – from Monday with him lowering his salary cap hit and, and agreeing to stay with the 49ers, all of a sudden Mitch, uh, you know, Mason Rudolph becomes a little bit more valuable than what he was a week ago or even three days ago. So uh, we'll see if something happens with that, if that comes to fruition, if they move Mason Rudolph or not. Uh, I did my 53 man roster and that on, on the website and you could check that out at DK Pittsburgh sports.com, of course. But, um, I had the Steelers trading Mason Rudolph and going with two quarterbacks on their initial 53-man roster. Now, that will change by the end of the week. The Steelers believe as an organization in keeping three quarterbacks on their roster. So even if they come out of Tuesday at 4 o'clock with just two on their roster, well, they've got some other things, some housekeeping stuff that they have to do, such as putting DeMonte KZ on injured reserve and things of that nature that uh, you have to have that player on your 53 man roster to be able to do that. So uh, before you can make that move. So even if the Steelers, uh, that roster looks one way at at four o'clock on Tuesday, it's going to look completely different uh, later in that, in the week next week. And I expect the Steelers to be a little active on the waiver wire. Uh, I would expect that, they'll go out and they'll uh, acquire at least one veteran player, uh, whether that's a safety now because of KZ situation, whether that's an outside linebacker, whether it's a, another quarterback, uh, could be an offensive lineman. We'll see. I don't expect there to be a lot of offensive linemen available on the waiver wire. That's just not going to happen. And there's also not a lot available in terms of being you know acquire being able to acquire in a trade unless you're really willing to overpay for that guy. Um, I, one question that I have gotten uh, a lot of is, well, why don't you keep a whole, keep Mason Rudolph because that helps your you know he, you can get a comp pick for him in 2023. You're not going to get a comp pick for Mason Rudolph in 2023. Mason Rudolph's going to sign a one or two year deal worth, you know, $3 million a year or something like that. That's not going to be one of the top 32 free agent contracts signed next offseason. It's just not going to happen. And the Steelers also should be pretty active in free agency once again. They'll have cap space and, they, uh, you know, not a lot of their own guys left to resign. So, you know, they could make some signings in free agency. What it does is help you offset some of those signings. So if you lose more than you gained, then perhaps you get it. A, a low round comp pick, but they're not going to have anybody who hits free agency next year. Who's going to get, uh, you know, a massive contract or anything like that. They locked Deontay Johnson up. They locked me Minka Fitzpatrick up. Those were the two guys that you would have gotten uh, potentially a high, a high comp compensatory pick for. You're not going to get that kind of compensatory pick or any compensatory pick for losing Mason Rudolph or Chris Wormley or someone like that. Uh, it's just not going to happen. So, um, you know, I get the argument and I've made the same argument that you hold on to Mason Rudolph because you've needed three quarterbacks in the past, but I feel pretty good. Um, uh, you know, that was when, you know, Hey, maybe Kenny Pickett's not ready to be the number two. Well, I think he showed that he is capable of being that guy uh, and being the number two 
uh, behind Mitch Trubisky. Um, so I, I feel a little bit better about that now than I did a month ago, for sure. Uh, you know, Trubisky is, is going to be in an interesting spot here. A lot of people are assuming that he'll just be a placeholder here and eventually turn things over to Kenny Pickett at some point this season because he's either going to struggle or he's going to get hurt. Well, what if he doesn't? I looked this up just a couple of years ago. This is in 2018. Mitch Trubisky was quarterback nine in fantasy football. It means he was the ninth best quarterback in terms of scoring points per game in fantasy football. That's pretty lofty status there. You know, some of the guys that he was ahead of, uh, you know, in that situation, um, Russell Wilson, Dak Prescott, Philip Rivers, Kirk Cousins, Tom Brady, Carson Wentz, Josh Allen, Baker Mayfield. Uh, you know, so there's some guys there that he was ahead of in that pecking order. Now, obviously, that changed, you know, as his, his uh, career went on in, in Chicago. But he wasn't bad. It wasn't all bad there. And, and actually, when he played, he typically, you know, played okay. So, you know, it's not a situation where he's just automatically going to go out there and fail. I don't think that's the case whatsoever. I think Mitch Trubisky could go out, as he did in this preseason, when he posted a 115.2 passer rating. I think he could be pretty successful. I know people are worried about the offensive line. I get it, but that's why you've added a mobile quarterback, a guy who can run out of some things like that. Trubisky was sacked three times in 34 pass attempts in the preseason. And I got news for you. Both sacks that he was, or both times he was sacked in Sunday's game against the Lions, they were kind of on him. The one he ran out of bounds, he should have just chucked the ball away. He took, you know, basically a, a sack for no, no gain. Uh, but no loss. I mean, he's right at the line of scrimmage. And the second one, you know, I, I, he was in the pocket. He had three seconds to throw the football. Nobody got open. He ended up taking a sack. That isn't necessarily on the court or on the uh, offensive line in those situations. Quarterback's got to get the ball out in some of those situations. And I really think that the Steelers coaching staff told Trubisky, hey, we know you can run, stay in the pocket in this game. Uh, we'll do some, you know, when you get into the regular season, then you can run a little bit more. Feel a little bit better about you doing it, doing it then. Because he only scrambled twice in the entire preseason. He got 14 yards on those two scrambles. We certainly know he can run the ball better than that. And so I think, they, you know, he was, he was given a mandate from the coaching staff to, hey, stay in the pocket, make the throws, uh, and, and do it that way. Um, but anyways, we'll, we'll see where this whole thing goes here. But uh, certainly the Steelers have some decisions to make here in the next 24 hours uh, with what they do at a number of positions on this roster. I mentioned Trubisky's ranking in fantasy football. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the next segment. I don't do much fantasy football talk on here, but we're going to do it in the next segment. You're listening to The Dale Lally Show here on the DK Pittsburgh Podcast Network. I'll be back with more right after this. Back to the Dale Lally Show here on the DK Pittsburgh Sports Podcast Network. I am your host, Dale Lally. And um, I mentioned uh, the, the fantasy football aspect of the Steelers. I know everybody's doing their drafts right now. And it made me think of this as I was driving home last night after uh, doing uh, the, covering the game and then doing the final word uh, later in the evening. And there was a caller from Pittsburgh who, who called uh, one of the, uh, the, the fantasy football shows that I listened to. He said he just had his, his draft in Pittsburgh and he had taken uh, George Pickens in the third round. Well, I'm here to tell you folks, that's not a good plan. Don't do that. Don't take George Pickens in the third round. So where should you take Steeler players? 
if you're looking at those, you know, it, you know, we got to draft a Steeler player. Where should you take him? Well, obviously, Najee Harris is going to be a first round draft pick. Where he goes in the first round depends on, you know, what league you're in, the scoring, and basically some of the uh, uh, abilities of your people that you're in the league with. I mean, you just don't know how they're going to value him. Obviously, in, Pitt, in leagues in Pittsburgh, he's probably going to go a little bit higher than, you, than you'd like. Um, you're probably not going to get him if you're picking below pick four or five. Uh, but he belongs right in that area because of the volume that he's going to get. After that, your next highest stealer, uh, then you're looking at Deontay Johnson being that next guy. And my target area for Deontay Johnson's probably round three, uh, you know, late in round three, early round four is, is where you're looking at getting Deontay Johnson. Um, he's right around, you know, somewhere between wide receiver 13, 14, 15, somewhere in that range. Uh, so you should be able to get him in round three or four. That should match up well for you. Beyond that, again, I'm not taking Pickens that early. Uh, I would actually, in fact, still take another Steeler perhaps before that, before I would even think about Pickens. Obviously, Chase Claypool would be that guy. I might even think about taking Pat Fryermuth before George Pickens. Don't forget about Fryermuth. I know a lot of people uh, are, are scared nationally of this Steeler passing game. We've seen Mitch Trubisky and Kenny Pickett throwing the football down the middle of the field to Pat Fryermuth. Right now, he's going around tight end 9, 10, 11, somewhere in that range. Uh, I'm, I, I feel bullish about Fryermuth this year. I think he really uh, realistically should be uh, bumped up a little bit higher than that. I would think seventh or eighth round for Pat Fryermuth. I think he's going to be a true tight end one this year. Let's put it this way. If he catches the same 60 passes that he caught last year, but his depth of target is deeper, if we look at just what he did in this preseason in, in a limited amount of playing time, uh, you know, he averaged eight and a half yards per catch last year. He averaged 16 yards a catch in the preseason this year. Five catches for 80 yards in the preseason. Now, I don't expect him to average 16 yards a catch over the course of the season. But I think he'll average 12 or 13 yards. So again, if he gets those 16 or those 60 catches that he had last season and averages 12 or 13 yards per catch, and also gets some of the red zone targets that he did last year, he's a tight end one, folks. I, I would seriously, he's a nice sleeper at the tight end position. Obviously, you're not going to get that in Pittsburgh, but if you're drafting somewhere else, you can get that. Um, in terms of some of the other Steelers there, I I'd look at Pickens more of a a 12th or 13th round guy. I think that's where you can get him and be okay. And don't forget about Trubisky here. Again, as I mentioned in the, in the previous segment, he was QB nine in 2018. He's got better weapons around him this year. If you think the Steelers weapons are going to be that good, don't be afraid to take their quarterback because he'll also run. Now I'm not saying you take Mitch Trubisky as your starting quarterback, but I think he'd at least be a viable number two quarterback for you. I would take a late round flyer on him. What if he hits? I mean, honestly, if you start looking at it, would you rather have Mitch Trubisky with the weapons that he has? Or, I don't know, pick a pick a, a quarterback that's uh, in that second tier. Uh, Kirk Cousins. Now, he has good weapons, too. Uh, Jameis Winston. Or Matt Ryan, who you know is not going to run anywhere. Ryan Tannehill who might be done. Mac Jones, who's not going to run. I'd rather Mitch Trubisky than all those guys as my QB too. Don't forget about those guys. And oh, by the way, if, you, if you're in a super deep league and you can stash a, a handcuff at running back for Najee Harris, it's Jalen Warren. He's the guy. That's going to do it for the Dale Lally Show here today on the DK Pittsburgh Sports Podcast Network. I am your host, Dale Lally. I'll be uh, back again tomorrow. We'll talk about some of the, the roster cuts and moves that the Steelers have made here. Uh, you can listen to all of our shows here on the uh, DK Pittsburgh Sports Podcast Network. We've got Steelers, Pirates, Penguins, Pitt playing a big game against West Virginia later this week. Penn State is uh, starting uh, kicking off uh, later this week as well against Purdue. So lots of stuff to talk about. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.